morning Christchurch family. I've been thinking recently about faith, a pretty big topic. There are several different meanings of the word faith listed in our Collins Concise Dictionary. The first definition is a strong or unshakable faith in something, especially without proof. Words like trust, loyalty, confidence, conviction appear in the listing too. We talk about faith in many different contexts. We talk about the Christian faith, putting our faith in Jesus. We talk about having enough faith or not when we pray for something specific. A quick glance in the concordance at the back of my Bible brings up references to people having great faith or little faith, faith as small as a mustard seed, taking up the shield of faith, fighting the good fight of faith, being justified and saved through faith, living by faith, faith being sure of what we hope for, the great hall of faith in chapter 11 of Hebrews and many, many more references. Faith is obviously a very important word for Christians. A long time ago, I read a book by Ronald Dunn called Don't Just Sit There, Have Faith. I've forgotten most of the content, but amazingly, one story from the book has stayed with me ever since. And even more amazingly, I can still remember its simple but important point. So having found the book and dusted it off, I'm going to read that section to you now. This is Ronald Dunn talking about a holiday uh, that he went on with his family. A few years ago, my family and some friends from our church spent a few days holiday in Colorado. It was early March and winter still had an icy grip on everything. Near the place we stayed were 12 little trout lakes covered with ice. One day, one of my friends suggested I walk across one of the frozen lakes, assuring me it was perfectly safe to do so since they ice skated on the lakes all through the winter. I've lived in the south and southwest all my life and the lakes there don't freeze solidly enough to support the weight of a child, much less that of an adult. I wasn't crazy about the idea, but after some coaxing, I ventured out. Perhaps ventured out is stretching it. I inched my way out not more than a couple of yards from the shore because unlike Peter, I doubted Jesus would reach out and save me if I began to sink. I kept a nervous eye on the shore and one on the ice, watching for cracks. And I tiptoed, because you weigh less when you tiptoe. Didn't you know that? Anyway, after a brief and nervous walk on the water, I scrambled back to the solid safety of the shore. I had little faith in the ice. Later, as we drove back to our lodge, we passed another of the trout lakes, and as I looked out, I saw a man sitting in the middle of the frozen lake. He was sitting on a wooden crate, hunched over a hole in the ice, fishing. I did a double take at that feeling foolish as I recalled my timid excursion on the ice. Now to the point. The man sitting in the middle of the frozen lake had great faith in the ice, right? I had almost no faith in the ice. Now which one of us was the safest? He with his great faith or me with my little faith? Surely the man with the great faith was more secure. The fact is, the man with the great faith was no safer than I was with my little faith. Though my faith was practically non-existent, I was just as safe as the fisherman who possessed great faith. Why? It wasn't our faith that held us up. It was the ice. If it had been our faith supporting us, I would have sunk immediately. But I, with my little faith, was just as safe as the fisherman with his great faith. So what then is the advantage of having a great faith? I'm glad you asked. Picture me on the ice, timid, Nervous, afraid to venture out, constantly looking for cracks in the ice, fearing that at any moment the ice is going to betray me to the icy water beneath. Know any Christians like that? Timid, nervous, afraid to venture out on the word of God, their eyes constantly searching for cracks in his promises, fearing that God may at any moment abandon them. There's no joy or excitement in their walk. That is the life of little faith. Picture the fisherman unafraid to step out on the ice, boldly venturing to the very middle, enjoying himself, resting his entire weight on the ice. Maybe you've seen a few Christians like that. They boldly step out on the promises of God, unafraid in the middle of his will, filled with joy and satisfaction, resting on the word of God who cannot lie. That's the life of great faith. As we drove past, I said, I wonder where he got enough nerve to do that. The driver answered immediately, oh, he lives around here. He knows the ice. He knows the ice. 
And that is the difference between faith and no faith, weak faith and strong faith. The psalmist said, those who know your name will put their trust in you. True faith is authenticated by its object and the only valid object is God. The secret of faith is knowing God and the greater our knowledge of him and his word, the greater will be our faith. So the point here is that the amount of faith Ronald Dunn had in the ice made no difference at all to the ability of the ice to hold him safely. The ice was perfectly capable of holding him, whether he believed it or not. But if he had known the ice better, he would have known that he could trust the ice and he would have had more confidence to step out further. He might even have enjoyed the experience. So if we focus on our faith itself, maybe trying to drum up enough faith for something or feeling that our faith isn't strong enough to see us through a difficult time, we're missing the point. The question for us is not so much how much faith, but faith in what or whom. Jesus tells his disciples in Mark 11, 22, to have faith in God. We don't have faith in faith, we have faith in God. It's not wrong to want to have great faith and we can pray for that, but when we put the emphasis on how much faith we have, we are concentrating on ourselves instead of on God. Perhaps this is why the writer of Hebrews directs our gaze straight to Jesus after the wonderful chapter about the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. This is the beginning of Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that's the heroes of faith in, verse, in chapter 11, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. The men and women listed in chapter 11 were imperfect, weak people, just like us but they trusted and knew their perfect, strong God. They knew him, knew his promises, and were able to step out in faith to achieve great things for him. We have the advantage over them in knowing Jesus and through faith being recipients of his saving grace. He is the pioneer, the founder of faith, and he is the perfecter of faith. So our faith will grow as we get to know him better in his word spend time speaking with him and listening to him in prayer, walk more closely with him day by day, keeping our eyes firmly fixed on him. And from there, we can gain confidence to step out in faith as we discover that he is utterly trustworthy. As we learn to trust him, we can achieve great things for God, not because our faith in itself is strong, but because the object of our faith, God himself, is strong. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are trustworthy and strong and we can have faith in you. Thank you that we can know you and learn to trust you more. Please grow our faith, Lord, and help us to step out onto the ice, not with fear and trepidation, but with confidence and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen.